If you don't mind, would you stand with me for the reading of the word? Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to be preaching today about a living sacrifice. Before we go into the word, I want to pray with you and pray for you that the Holy Spirit will meet us here. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray now that as we enter into your word, that your word would enter into us. We acknowledge that the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. And in this room today, we need life. Speak, Lord, as your servants here. Shake us like a garment. Shake us like a rug. Shake us until we become everything that you have called and desire for us to be in these last days and times. And for this, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you the praise that is due to your amazing name. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. I'm going to be talking today about a living sacrifice. Let the church say a living sacrifice. The book of Romans has been considered and regarded in many circles and circuits as the fifth gospel. Not because it is at all related to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but because rather it brings a level of definition to what we find in Matthew, Mark. Luke and John. The Gospels are more descriptive and gives us a life experience of the man Jesus. But Romans comes back and begins to add clarity and definition to all the things that we see Jesus doing in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. There is justification, there is sanctification taking place in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but those terms are not really defined until we run into the book of Romans. I think that every believer at some point in their life should read the book of Romans in its entirety because it begins to explain what Jesus really did for us. If you miss the book of Romans, then you will miss what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. If you miss the book of Romans, you'll miss things like justification. Literally means to be justified. Justified means just if I'd never sinned. It doesn't mean that we haven't fallen short of the glory of God. It just means that we don't look like what we've been through. The book of Romans defines those things for us. Sanctification. Sanctification. Let the church say sanctification. Sanctification, sanctified. Sanctified is not a denomination. <laughs> By the way, a sanctified church. No, sanctified is not a denomination. Sanctified is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. It is the, the process of becoming better, becoming all that God will have us to be. There's a difference between salvation and sanctification. Salvation is a one-time ordeal, but sanctification is a process. I was saved when I was six years old. But the reason that I kept coming back to church is because believers need to be taught how to hold on to the Jesus that they were originally introduced to. That's why even after you give your life to Jesus, you still need to give your presence to the house of God because we need to be taught how to hold on to the Jesus that we were originally introduced to. Uh, the, the closer we stay to God, the easier it is for us to not lay our religion down. Talk to me when you get to church. I'm looking at about four of y'all in this room that you had some days like that. Mama said, it'd be days like this. You love the Lord and he heard your cry, but you getting ready to make somebody else cry if they don't leave you alone. Sanctification is the process of me becoming better on today than I was on yesterday. Which is why I believe Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 is so critical. I beseech you therefore. I beseech you therefore. Let the church say therefore. I beseech you, therefore. Now, whenever you see the word therefore in the Bible, it means that you need to go back and see what the word therefore is there for. Does that make sense? 
He says, I beseech you by the mercies of God. Why does he say that? Because in chapter 11, verses 33 through 36, you would discover that what he's really dealing with is that there is no searching to the understanding of God's ways and his judgments. As a matter of fact, there was one verse that said this, uh, who can know the mind of God? This is so deep to me. Who can know the mind of God? And then it says, uh, who shall be his counselor? That's so deep to me. Who, who hath known the mind of God and who is it that you know that has ever been God's counselor? Which means that God doesn't need an advisor. He's always been God. As a matter of fact, he's God all by himself. He doesn't need anybody to help him be God. He's the CEO of the universe and he doesn't have, nor does he have need of a board of directors. There's nobody in his ear telling him what he should do. Aren't you grateful that God doesn't have anybody in his ear, that when he makes up his mind to bless you, there's nobody else in his ear saying, well, Lord, I don't think you should do that. When God makes up his mind to move on your behalf, there's nothing that any man can do. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. And he says in verse number one, chapter 12, because of this, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, here it is, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. All right? All right. So if you're going to be a living sacrifice, there are three things you need to get. Number one, write this down. I need you to understand this about this text that he begs the brethren, B-E-G-S, he begs the brethren. I, I don't see that in the text. That's because you ain't reading it right. Here it is, verse number one. He says, I beseech you. That word beseech literally means to beg, to urge. I'm pulling on you. I'm begging you. I'm down on my knees begging you to do this. Can I tell you why this messed me up, Mr. Mike? He has just given the credentials of God in chapter 11. There's no searching of his understanding. No one has ever known his mind. He's so good at what he does that he doesn't even need an advisory or a counsel. And then he comes back and says in verse 1, because of all this, I'm begging you by the mercies of God to present your bodies a living sacrifice. All right, y'all ain't gonna like this part, but I'm gonna say it anyway. All right, I'm in pastor mode. I care how you feel about this, I'm gonna say it anyway. Say it with my chest, that's how I'm gonna do it. There are some things with your saved self that God shouldn't have to beg you to do. I know you didn't want to hear that because I didn't want to have to say that to you because I want us to still be friends next week. But there are certain things that we should not be begged to do. It should not be like pulling teeth. It should not be a cataclysmic move of God for saved people to have a prayer life. Hurry up and say amen louder before you have me thinking that you don't have one. It, it, it should not be a ventriloquist act that when you come to church for someone to have to slip their hand up your back and make you say, thank you, Jesus. I don't know like you know what he's done for you. So shouldn't nobody have to beg us to praise him? I'm going to go even further. I'm going go even further. Y'all ready for this? You ain't ready. I'm going to say it anyway. Nobody should have to beg you to read the Bible. There are certain things that when you connect to God, that should become automatic for you. However, check this, watch the humility in the text. Writer here says, I beseech you, brethren. I could command it. I could demand it based upon how powerful God is. How good he's been. You, you, you remember that time he paid your bills 
When your money was funny and your change was strange, you remember that time? You, you, you remember that time that he brought you out of that bad car accident that could have taken you out? You, you, you remember that time you went through that crazy relationship and some way, somehow God managed to pull you out of it? You remember when you almost lost your mind? As a matter of fact, you did go off the deep end just a little bit, but he reeled you back in. When God does things like that for you and heal your body and lift you up and encourage you and inspire you and, emo and he motivates you, that there is something about him that should cause you to respond to him. If you are in a burning building and someone comes up to the top floor and they reach in that burning building and they pull you out and they bring you down that ladder and you come down and you could have been dead. You watch death uh, pass right before your eyes. By the time you get down on the ground to safety, the person that went in to bring you out, you're going to be saying, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. What, what can I do for you? Let, let me cook something for you. Can, can I pay you something? Let, let me do something for you because of what you have been delivered from. And when God delivers you from something, there should be a demand on you to give God the glory that is due to his name. But Paul says, even in that, I'm going to ask you to present your body a living sacrifice. I don't know how you feel about it, but this is for everybody that understands how great and how marvelous and how mighty God has really been in their life. When God does a whole lot of stuff for you, maybe it's just me, and maybe I'm going to bless God by myself today, but I'm at a place in my life where God's wish is my command. Who am I preaching to in this room today? God's wish has now become my command so watch what he says he says i beseech you i beg you because of his mercies that you present your bodies a living sacrifice so number one he begs the brethren here's number two write this down make sure you get this in your spirit it is motivated by mercy when you present your body a living sacrifice it is motivated by mercy I'm going to try not to shout in my little cute suit today, but get this. Hey, hey, next to Jesus, my absolute all-time favorite word is mercy. See, I, I'm not going to play with y'all. I ain't going to throw no rocks and hide my hands. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. I'm standing here right now because of God's mercy. Who else feel like I feel today? I'm... I, I'm not here because of my goodness. Don't let the smooth taste fool you. I'm not here because I'm a preacher. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not here because of any other credentials. I'm here today because and by the mercy of God. Not just grace. But mercy rewrote my story. Why is that? You see, um, grace is when God gives you something you don't deserve. You don't qualify for it, so he gives it to you. All right. You didn't qualify for the job, but you got it anyway. Grace, your credit wasn't good enough to get that car. But God touched somebody's heart for them to pull some strings. And you got the car that you wanted. That was grace. Mercy, however, is when God withholds from you the justice that you really do deserve. Mm -hmm. um, grace got you the job, but mercy keeps you on the job when you ain't good at it. I'm talking to somebody now. M -m mercy, mercy is <laughs> you get there late every day. Even working from home, you clock in late. But they ain't sent you no email yet saying your services here are no longer needed. Somebody ought to lift up your hand and shout, mercy, Lord, mercy, Lord. <laughs> You've been driving fast enough in your car to have gotten more tickets than you got in your life. That's mercy. Grace got you the car. Mercy keeping them from towing it. I have eaten enough wrong foods in my life to be dead. 
but mercy is keeping me here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, you done said enough of the wrong stuff to the wrong people for them to have shot you in your face. Well, if not them shooting you, you shooting some. Mercy kept somebody else from you. Say amen to the truth. Mercy is when God withholds from me the justice that I really do deserve. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. That's mercy. That, that, that's mercy 2.0. Because death is what I really deserve. He says, watch this. I'm begging you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Here it is. Based upon the level of mercy that God has shown to you. Here's what that means. Here's what that means. If for no other reason, for no other reason, that we present ourselves a living sacrifice, it ought to be because he's been merciful. He's been merciful. We look for so many reasons to thank God and praise him. And then if we don't find enough reasons, we don't praise him like we should. There is one thing that should put you in your shouting shoes every day. Here it is. His mercies are new every morning. Now, if you ain't never made no mistakes in your life, this kind of message don't move you. But for the eight of us in this room that know we said some stuff we shouldn't have said and did some stuff we shouldn't have done and it's some stuff we did that we ain't telling nobody else about. You got some stuff you taking to the grave with you. Ain't nobody but you and Jesus gonna know nothing about that. If for no other reason you should bless God, it's because of the secrets that God kept from other people, but he gave you his mercy regardless. I mean, I'm talking about the fact you, you don't even read your Bible like you should, but he still give you revelation. You don't even pray like you should, but he still be answering the secret prayers that are embedded in your heart because of his mercy. If no other reason for you you to present your body a living sacrifice it ought to be because he looked beyond my faults saw my needs and supplied them if no other reason if don't nobody else in the church say amen hallelujah or thank you Jesus when I think of his mercy towards me and how great his mercy is you sing amazing grace I'm gonna rewrite the song amazing mercy a amazing mercy somebody went in the back room and they voted and it was moved in second properly that amazing grace is the hymn of the church nobody asked me I wasn't in that meeting if it was me I would say amazing mercy shall always be my song of praise because mercy is when God withholds from me what I really do deserve I deserve death but I still have life I should be sick but he gave me a reasonable portion of my health and strength I should have lost it all I should have been cuckoo for cocoa puffs but he keep on regulating my mind and thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because he trusted in thee is there anybody in this anybody on Facebook anybody in YouTube land that can fail God for his mercies are never failing it's motivated by mercy if you ask me why I do what I do it's because he's been merciful to me maybe just maybe you are one mistake away from living the life that God wants you to live that went over your head. That went over your head. Maybe you are one mistake away from living the life that God wants you to live. You see, because people that have been forgiven much, they will bless him much. People that know that God has loved them even when they were unlovely and unlovable, those are the kind of people that you ain't got to kick them in the back to clap their hands and declare that the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. Maybe he hasn't forgiven you at that level yet, but I dare you to go through something in your life that only God can pull you through. Man, it'll make you get in line. It'll make you cut some of your friendship circles and loose. It'll make you tell some folks, baby, if you don't want to be with me that's cool in the game long as I got King Jesus I don't need nobody else he said it is motivated by mercy now get this get this got to raise it up he says I beseech you I'm begging you 
Because God has been merciful, although I could command it of you because he's been merciful to you. But I beseech you by the mercies of God, meaning it's not just one mercy, it is mercies. It is continuous mercy. I tried to tell you that his mercies are new every single morning. That's why when people try to remind you of, their, of your past, you should just leave them there. People who always try to bring up your past should never get angry if you leave them there. Because his mercies are new every single morning. That means when you wipe the spackle out your eye. God got early morning stank breath mercy. Soon as your feet hit the flow. That kind of mercy. I, I'm talking about you, you need to get up and take a shower kind of mercy. That, that, that's the kind of mercy that God has for it. Watch this. That kind of mercy that when don't nobody want to be bothered with you. That kind of mercy when nobody want to talk to you. That, that's the kind of mercy that God has. Now check this out. Check this out. He says, number one, I, he says, I'm begging the brethren. I'm begging the brethren. Secondly, he says that it is motivated by mercy. But then here's number three. Yeah, yeah, I had to write this one down for you. I got to get this to you. I'm coming for you in just a second, um, but, but you need to write this one down. I, I had to meticulously write this. Write this down. If you're going to be a living sacrifice, understand that God's request is reasonable. His request is reasonable. All right, I'm going I'm, I'm to give you two minutes of information on that, then we're going to raise up. Here's what he's saying. I'm asking you, begging you to present your physical mortal bodies as a living sacrifice. Watch this. Because every other sacrifice has to die. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, chicken and a pig were talking one day about breakfast. And... Um, Chicken said, uh, I'm going to provide some eggs, right? And you provide the bacon. Pig was like, uh, I don't know how we're going to do this breakfast thing. Because in order for us to have eggs, all you got to do is lay one. But if we're going to have bacon, that means I got to die. There are some people that don't mind dropping eggs because it don't cost them nothing. But when you are a living sacrifice, it costs you to do what you do. May God deliver you from people who think it's easy to be you. Boy, I'm got to turn up in this joint. May God deliver you from everybody that think you're so easy. Because, can I tell you, see, most of the folk that's talking about you, clowning you, dogging you out, I dare you to take your shoes off and give it to them. I promise you they couldn't walk a mile in your shoes because it ain't easy to be you. The problem is we just made it look easy to be us. You come in church with a smile on your face. They don't even understand all the conversations you had in the car on your way to church. They don't know what you got to deal with as soon as you walk up out of this place. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm a living sacrifice. Watch this. He's not making me die, but he is causing me to crucify my flesh. When you are living sacrifice, it don't mean that you got to lay on the altar and die literally, but it does mean spiritually and figurative, uh, figuratively, there are some things that need to die off in my life. It is the circumcision process that God wants me to go through. It is the pulling away of my flesh so that my spirit can be more exposed. But watch what he says, it's your reasonable service. That means the request is reasonable. Oh God, let me help everybody. Let me help everybody that's saying, preacher, that's easier said than done. Yeah. Let, let me talk to everybody that's saying, yeah, that, that, that's easy to say with your mouth, but it's hard to do in your body. It's easy to say with words, but it's hard to do the work. Here's what God want me to tell you. 
even if it seems hard and sounds hard, it's still reasonable. Watch this. Because God ain't asking you to do nothing for him that he ain't already done for you. Watch this. I can see if he's asking something of you that he ain't put forth his best effort to do on your behalf. But when God has done something in your life, the way you show appreciation is through your duplication. I'm going to preach by myself. I got the wrong crowd. It's through your duplication. That means if God gives to me, I ain't got no problem giving to him. If God blesses me, I have no problem blessing him. If he lifts me up, I have no problem lifting him up. If he holds me, I don't mind holding on to him. If he chooses me, I don't mind choosing him. Because everything that happened to me that was good, God did it for me. Somebody shout, it's reasonable. Oh, shucks. He says, it's your reasonable service. I'm through when I tell you this. Here it is. God's standards do not change. Just because you find it kind of hard does not mean that his standards change. His request is still reasonable. I know it's hard if someone smites you on one cheek to turn to them the other cheek. You got too much hood in you to obey that scripture. Y'all so holy, make me sick. You know, you, 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 you know folk like us, you know, we, we understand the ghetto. It's hard for us to obey scriptures like that because we were taught somebody put their hand on you. You you know the rules. You know the rules. If you gonna get jumped, if you buy three or four of them and you buy yourself, you 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 knock the, out of the first one, and then run like from the rest of them. Who heard that street code before? You knock the first one out, then the other three will think about messing with you. Maybe we don't need to bother them. Some scriptures are hard to obey. He says, but it's your reasonable service. Love your enemies. Some of y'all have a hard time liking your friends. It's some of your friends right now. They, they on the fence. You don't know if we're going to be friends next year. I'm going to give you a few more months. We all more in August now. I might as well just go on the rest of the year with you. Become January 1, your New Year's resolution. And you talking about loving your enemies. And it's hard to like some of your friends. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Truth is, I ain't praying for myself like I should this year. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church. If some of y'all don't call me at 8 o'clock in the morning, you don't be praying. You don't get no prayer unless you call. Some scriptures are hard to do. I had a friend of mine say the, the hardest scripture, he said, the scripture in the Bible that I wish God would take out got two words flee fornication. <laughs> Everybody look at me. You ain't going to get struck down. It's okay. It's all right. yeah, if, it, if, it's, if it's two words in the Bible that I wish one in there together. And you know as lonely as you be and as vulnerable as you be sometimes, as single as you are, and you want somebody in the bed next to you, it's hard to obey that text. Let me go to preach at my friend church. Maybe they'll say amen because y'all acting funny here at the house. Watch this. He said as hard as it is, it's your reasonable service. Watch Here's what reasonable means. I'm done. You can play softly. Here we go. Reasonable suggests 
it's the least you can do. It's the least you can do. That's, what, that, that's why this text is so powerful. It's powerful because what seems so hard and difficult for us should be easy to do in our hearts because of his mercy. I pray today that everybody who's listening, Facebook, YouTube, everybody in this room, that we would shift our focus to the goodness of God and shift it away from the hardness of the process. Did you hear what I just said? Shift it to the goodness of God and not the hardness of the process. Because whatever you give your mind, your mentality, your energy to, that's what's going to come alive in your life. If all you can focus on is how hard it is, that's all you'll ever see. But if you can shift it to how good God is, that's where your energy and your motivation will come from. And before you know it, you'll be loving people that you thought you couldn't stand. I pray that God moves on your heart in such a way that you would have to question whether or not you're soft. Am I getting soft? Because the 2015 me wouldn't let you talk to me like that and get away with it. You said, what? You put my name in your mouth and you know I don't like you? Try Jesus. Don't try me. I don't just lay hands, I throw hands. <laughs> that was the 2015 me. But the 2021 living sacrifice me will say, bless you. Forgive you love you and God says it's reasonable it's hard because you make it hard it's hard because you got a big ego you can forgive people if you want to you just like being in control of somebody's feelings that's why you won't let it go you 40 years old talking about what happened to you at 7 cut it out you survived it for 33 years. You made it without them. You have survived the worst. And we pat you on your back and say congratulations because you still made it even though your mom and them didn't help you get a car. Even though they didn't help you go through college like they helped your brothers and sisters. You made it anyway. He says the least you can do is to present your body a living sacrifice. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up every soul in this place. I lift up every soul that's watching right now to remind us all it's reasonable. It's not as hard as we think it is. It's not as hard as we make it to be. It's reasonable. And today, God, we shift our focus from the hardness of the process to the goodness of you, O oh God. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. I don't mind getting up early in the morning now to pray before I leave. The house for today, I don't mind reading your word. I don't mind giving every decision that I have to make over to you. I don't mind seeking first your kingdom and your righteousness. It's reasonable. It's feasible. After all, I lift you up because you lifted me up. Bless now this divine connection to work for our good in this fellowship. But then God bless us individually that we will walk with you all day, every day, not a moment without you. What a fellowship. He, thank you, Jesus. 
What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being my reason. Thank you for being my purpose. Thank you for being my cause. You're my cause and my effect. You're my yin and my yang. You're my morning and my evening. You're my sun and my moon. You're the alpha and the omega. I want to be with you from A to Z. Every step along the way. And even when it gets difficult, give me tranquilizing grace to make me rest and lay down in green pastures. That when the enemy comes in like a flood, remind me that you've already defeated the enemy. I'm walking with a winner. And yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, help us feel no evil because you're right there with us. It's reasonable. We give you honor and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Come on, just lift your hands one time and just thank God for your goodness and your mercy toward us it's for your goodness who we Jesus and your mercy toward who toward us And your mercy toward us. Come on, let's say it again. For your, for your goodness. Come on, lift your hand one time and say, And your mercy toward us. Come on, raise your voice. For your goodness. And your mercy, your mercy. Toward, us. toward us. That means he's blessing all of us at, at, oh, all at the same time. We don't have to wait to bless us. He can bless us all at once. And your mercy. Your mercy. Toward, toward us. Come on, one last time. Lift your voice. For your goodness. And your mercy. Mercy toward us. Toward Here's us. what we do. We offer We offer praise. Come on, all over the building. Come on, Facebook. Worship with us right there in your home. Right there at your computer, right there on your cell phone. Tell Jesus, we all pray. Come on, I can't hear you. says we offer praise when you offer something to someone they have a choice as to whether or not they want to receive it and based on how you present it will determine whether or not God wants to receive it that means you can't give him the praise you want to give him you got to give God the praise that he deserves so this time when you sing it, I want you to sing it from your belly. I want you to sing it out of your shundo. I want you to sing it from the pit. From the all that is within me, we all the praise.
to pray Our fair Come on, one last time, everybody, all of you say to praise him in this sanctuary. Come on. Last time for this moment. Come on. Let him hear it. Let him hear it. Give it to him. Give it to him. Let all praise him. Bless the name of our God. He is worthy to be praised forever for his goodness and his mercy. Listen, I want to submit now an invitation to any and everybody. If you've not given your life to Jesus Christ, today is the day of salvation. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. I'm going to do it next Sunday. Who told you you'd make it that far? Do it right now. How long shall you be torn between two opinions? There's no other God like our God. There's no other God but our God. Only Jesus can save you today and any other day. If that's you today, put in the comment section, I accept Jesus today. I reach out to you. I want to pray with you. I want to commune with you as you accept our Lord and Savior today. Listen, you don't have to join our church to do that. This may not be the church that you want to be a part of. It's cool in the game. I don't mind you riding with one of my friends as long as we're going to the same place, which is heaven. Just accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord today. Then secondly, get in a good Bible-based church that will feed you the Word of God, that will teach you how to grow in God. If this place is for you, put in the comment section, I want to join the FCC. I'll reach out to you within the next 24 hours. You will hear my voice. I'll be calling and reaching out to you to welcome you into our church family. If you're in this room and you would like to do that today, you can do that on your way out. Simply fill out one of our membership registration cards and I'll be reaching out to you today as well. If the Spirit leads you to be here, then this is where you need to be. Real talk, real talk. I don't solicit members. I don't beg people to join. I send an invitation. It is yours to receive it. The invitation is yours right now. As we do that, we're also giving of our tithes and our offerings. We're doing that right now in this moment. The baskets are coming around. If you need one, uh, if you need an envelope, rather, uh, uh, just let us know. We'll give one to you. If you would like to give by text or by cash app, all of that information is on the screen. Text to give. 833-380-5555. Eight three 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 eight zero eight six zero six. Text forward and the amount that you would like to give to that number, or cash out dollar sign forward CC. If it's for our building project, dollar sign the number four future home number two. We're giving in this room. Let's give the very best that we can. I beseech you by the mercies of God, based upon His mercy to you, that you would give according to His goodness in your life. We offer praise. We offer praise. We we offer praise. Yeah. Has everyone given that desires to give? We don't want you to miss out on the opportunity to sow and to give on today. Amen. Let's stand. Let us stand. I'll give you our announcements as we stand. Y'all act like y'all ain't ready to go. I'll come back at three if y'all want me to. I'm joking.
I'm joking. Not today. Got a couple of engagements. Um, but we just thank you so much for coming and being a part on today. We are headed right over the hill, right over the mountain, right over the bridge to Mount Eric Baptist Church. Their service started seven minutes ago. And so if I'm running out of here, it's because I'm going over there. Uh, but you know I love you. Uh, you know how I feel about you. I look forward to praying with you and for you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Bible study Wednesday, 6.45 p.m. We love to see your face in the place. Father, we thank you now for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt. Thank you for this word that has gone forth. Thank you for the worship that has gone forth. Thank you today for the witness that shall go forth as we leave this place, but never from your presence. Bless these, your people, with every spiritual blessing in which they stand in need. You know every secret, every inner thing, every private thing, the things that we don't talk to other people about. God, visit us in that vulnerable place this week. Bless every seed sower. Somebody sold and gave today that really needed what they gave. I pray, God, that you will restore it to them 100-fold. Bless us physically, emotionally, mentally, financially, domestically, scholastically, professionally. But most of all, continue to bless us spiritually for what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy the king immortal invincible the only wise god our savior be glory majesty dominion and power both now and forevermore and all god's children say it amen love y'all